All right, everybody. Welcome back for another one. And I wanted to start this video off thanking you guys for getting me over a thousand subs. You know, it took me a little bit to get there, but that's fine with me because all I do on my channel is share information with what I think my friends and family need to hear when it comes to crypto. So uh, if you're along for the journey with me, uh, welcome to the channel. All right. And if you haven't already joined the discord, the links in the description as well. Got a lot of great minds in there sharing information. Uh, once again, I'm one guy, I can't cover everything. So it's great to have people sharing knowledge. All right, straight up. That's all I want to do is form a community of a bunch of people helping each other out, get through this crypto speculation and into mass adoption, right? Plain and simple. Next goal is 10K subs. Let's see if we can get there. All right. I had a lot of people asking me, what are you going to make a video about? Well, I've been away for six days and it feels like I've been away for a year. All right. The space moves so fast. There's a million things I could talk about, but really I just want to talk about big picture in the market. All right. And a few news pieces I thought were kind of interesting that play into everything that's going on right now. So first and foremost, still think that Bitcoin is at a local top here. I think it could consolidate for a few months right here, maybe six months even, and then have another leg up for the end of the year. Or maybe it gets one more leg up already right now and touches this logarithmic curb that will get us up over to maybe 85 to 100 grand. Who knows? Uh, somewhere in there. It could even go up way higher and wick down. We'll see. Uh, but I, I think that Bitcoin is relatively out of gas right now. And uh, we're going to see an explosive alt season coming. That's what I'm still thinking. And that's what I've been preparing for. Uh, over a year at this point. If you've been watching my channel, you've known that. All right, I've been talking about the alt season mostly because I believe that that's where the real life-changing wealth is going to come from. So if you got in on this Bitcoin move, congratulations, happy for you. I'm just saying, be cautious right here. All right, I'm not saying that you should go dump all your Bitcoin. I'm just you know pay attention, watch what's going on, and make sure you're positioned for both ways. Right. All right, moving on to some news. So I found this really interesting that there was some crazy gazillion amount of uh, Chinese Yuan IOU sent across the XRP ledger on February 26th. There was also some, a big amount of Euro and US dollars sent across. What is this? I mean, to me on the surface, it just looks like they're testing the ledger. I'm not going to pretend that I fully understand it or anything. You know, I was just hoping to see if David Schwartz, the CTO of Ripple, would come in and kind of clarify for us what was going on. Um, you know, he didn't give us too much information. He just basically said that uh, people were sending a massive amount of IOUs across the network. And he said that it, the XRP ledger has um, protective mechanisms built in um, basically to help against spamming. And this would be one. So if you're going to send IOUs across the network, you can't do it unless both parties agree. And that's exactly what happened here. That's why it also sounds like testing to me. Who knows? But all I do know is that it resulted in 20,000 in XRP burned in fees. All right. So every time transactions are sent across this network, uh, a little bit of XRP gets burned in fees. All right. When you send a million, bazillion, gazillion, uh, Chinese yuan in one transaction, apparently it results in 20,000 XRP being burnt. Maybe they were seeing if, uh, you know, what price they might need it to be at in order to not burn the entire ledger up too soon or what? Who knows? But to me, it looks like they're just testing the network. And I thought this was very interesting. And as I said, you can come over here to that day uh, and see what it looked like. You know, 50% of the payments by currency were in the yuan. Then you had uh, 25 in the euro and 25 in USD. So like I said, who knows, but this is very interesting. And I think that they're testing the system, right? Also, I uh, had a few people in my discord speculating that maybe this happened on the same day that the fed system went down, uh, but that wasn't the case. And I think the fed system went down on the 24th and that massive E burning day was on the 26th. So I don't think they're related but this is still very interesting to me, right? So the Fed system that allows banks to send money back and forth went down for several hours. Why? Who knows? So they say the operational error 
as the Fed described it, impacted multiple services, including its pivotal automated clearinghouse system, which connects depository and related institutions sending electronic credit and debt transfers. I thought this was interesting as well because it happened at the same time that I was sending money. I actually had sent some money from Uphold and Coinbase to my bank. And like I've said before on this channel, I find it very interesting because during this exact time I was sending money, I had cleared a transaction at like one or two in the morning and I received the funds the next day. So within a few hours at the same time, the system was down. So to me, that tells me they're not using the system anymore, right? They're testing these other networks that they have. Which ones are they using? Who knows? But uh, yeah, I mean, so ACH, right? That's what this is. It typically takes like five to seven business days and I've had it take forever, up over a week before. Uh, but if I'm getting it within hours while the system is down, that it shows me they're using something else. Who knows what they're using, right? That's why we're speculating this market to try to find out where this actually goes from a utility standpoint. Another one, very interesting, right? New York Attorney General warns cryptocurrency industry, play by the rules or we will shut you down, right? I found this interesting for one, because they just slapped Tether on the wrist, this same exact Attorney General. They got their little fine and they got to move on printing while at the same time they're telling you to play by the rules. I'm not sure what happened there, but to me, um, I don't know, kind of like BC Backers says, in this market, you see negative news when they want you to sell, and you see positive news when they want you to buy. Who knows what's really going on, but to me, I feel like they're just showing a card. Honestly, they're saying eventually we will wreck this industry if we feel like it, and uh, you know, I'm not playing around with any of that. I think at the end of the day, the uh, know your customer and the AML systems, you know, the crypto that are playing by the rules are going to be the ones that win. And that's why I invest in those, period, right? Also, another interesting thing, just yesterday, Chinese province to ban Bitcoin mining by April due to carbon emission. Will they actually do this? Who knows? But April aligns perfectly with us peeking out on this Bitcoin chart on the logarithmic curve top, all right? So does the TA have to be set in stone? Absolutely not. Just find it interesting that they keep showing their hands right here. And for anyone who thinks that China can't ban Bitcoin mining, wake up basically, all right? And this is why I'm like hesitant for Bitcoin. And you know, I don't want anybody to lose money. If you're into Bitcoin, good for you, all right? I hope you become a billionaire and you are living happily ever after. But I personally don't believe in the future of it due to this carbon emission stuff, personally speaking. Who knows what happens, but that's China showing their cards right now, and same with the New York Attorney General, right? Well, as I mentioned, BC Backer a few times. If you don't follow him already, my views align exactly with this guy is saying. You know, his TA is definitely a lot better than mine. That's something that he probably has studied a lot, I can tell. I'm actually doing so myself behind the scenes. But basically, He's called a lot of these Bitcoin tops, you know, he bought the bottom, he basically sold this local top right here. Uh, and he's saying, right now he's moving into altcoins. That he's 98% in the market and altcoins are the next play. And, uh, you know, I think he's not even really speculating any of the new stuff. He's buying like Ethereum Classic and Zcash and stuff like that. Stuff that's been around that has price history. Uh, and also because it's on all the main exchanges, right? And it's hard to tell with all this DeFi stuff, all this new stuff, where the tops or bottoms are going to be because all the charts have really done since they came out is go up in a straight line. So that's why I'm kind of hesitant with them as well. I got one DeFi project I'm going to talk about on the back end of this. So, uh, But yeah, I'm with him, you know. I think alt season is coming. And I think you should definitely be focusing on the crypto that's been around um, that has ties to the big players and so on. So that's going to be basically everything that Grayscale owns and uh, the XRP, in my opinion. But the reason I'm right there with him, right? If you've been following me, like I said, I've been calling for this alt season forever. Been sitting here waiting for uh, an alt season since like 2019. Like, oh, this is going to break out eventually. 
Um, and the reason I say that is because, you know, I was here for this one and uh, I was here for this one as well. So even that little portion doesn't look too big. I made some pretty significant money during that period of time. So I've just been trying to buy the good altcoins preparing for one move like that because I know I only need one with what I've got invested to really set myself up. So we might even get two, right? Just we haven't even got the first one yet. So we're taking it step by step. But uh, yeah, I'm still waiting. And actually, since I've been recording this video, we had this massive dump in altcoins. Might need to take a look at the charts to see what's going on there. But uh, anyway, I mentioned one DeFi, all right? So I've been talking about this Filda a lot on the channel. Uh, people don't seem to really understand what it is at this point. I'm going to just try to clarify that really quickly. So Filda is essentially like a code copy of Compound, which is on Ethereum, right? But it is owned and operated by Huobi, basically. It's, well, it's an alliance between Huobi, Filecoin, and Elastos. Right, but the reason I'm really bullish on Filda is because it has a, a reputable team behind it, which just so happens to be Huobi. Right, Huobi is the second largest exchange by volume, next to Binance. It's almost, you know, a little over two times as high as uh, Coinbase. So that's a big deal, and no doubt in my mind they're going to list Filda one day. Right. They're going to list it on their exchange, their big exchange, and they can probably pump the price however they want, just like Binance has been doing with all of their uh, Binance Smart Chain DeFi projects. So I'm expecting big things out of Filda. I think it's one that hasn't really moved at all except for down. So uh, yeah, just wanted to clarify what it is, and I think it's going to be some big moves because of Wobi. And if you haven't noticed... All the Binance Smart Chain DeFi stuff has been really blowing up. One of them is that Pancake Swap, obviously a kind of a childish name in my opinion. But if you can see the Filda get somewhere around like this Uniswap market cap at 7.8 billion, you know Ave, 4.8 billion, going down the list. There's plenty here. Uh, what else we got? Compound. There's Compound at 2.3 billion roughly. So if Filda can get to a market cap like this which I think is entirely possible if Sushi and all these others, Pancake can be there, so can Filda with its connections. There's Filecoin right there. Uh, it, it would be valued, I believe, around 4 to $10 if it can land somewhere in this ballpark. So uh, it's a lot higher than 60 cents where it is. So that's why I'm sitting tight there. Just wanted to clarify a few things for you guys. You know, who knows what happens next, but it, it's just interesting. This is the stuff I'm actually paying attention to and caring about. Right, Fed system going down. There's no coincidence here. This massive amount of uh, yuan being sent across the XRP ledger. That's also no coincidence. To me, it looks like the systems are being tested. And I'm sitting tight waiting for the projects that have real utility. I think it's going to be the ones that are compliant. You know, the XRP, Stellar, Algorand, Hedera Hashgraph. Those are the ones that I've really seen that have KYC and some kind of deep government connection. So. Who knows? Last but not least, though, I just want to clarify for you guys. I've seen a lot of fear in the markets now. I, I definitely probably people that are newer here. Um, well, that's just how it goes, right? When the markets dump, see the fear into the market, they hit you with the negative news, they get you to sell, and then the markets pump. But, uh, you know, if you're feeling really nervous about what you hold, Chances are you don't care about the project. So if you're holding some crap you don't even know what it does or you don't care about, probably get rid of it, right? Try to set yourself up for the long run. You know, get involved with stuff you believe in and design your portfolio in a way that you can be patient with it. Because honestly, this market is probably about 90% emotion and 10% homework, right? You do just a little homework and control all that emotion and uh, you should probably make it. All right. Hope that was informative. As always, please like and subscribe. Share with your friends and family. And stay tuned for the next one. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Uh, paper money is going away. Yes. Um, and crypto is a far better way to transfer value than, than pieces of paper. That's for sure. Without a doubt. That has its pros and cons. Just to clarify, Tesla's not going to start selling Bitcoin. Anytime. No, we're not. <laughs> okay. You no, heard it no. here first, even though everyone thought that. Yeah, right.